Hi guys, Rap Critic here, and guess what? Travis Scott is still boring. And you know, normally I want to give the mainstream artists the benefit of the doubt when critiquing their music, but come on, his latest single was part of a McDonald's merchandising collaboration, and they straight up just called it Franchise. For God's sakes, it's the functional word for corporate food chains and what Disney labels their Marvel Cinematic Universe to trick people into thinking they aren't watching a bunch of sequels. Just on title alone, you're hit with the fact that this song isn't about having fun or expressing an interesting idea, it's about cranking out yet another market research product from the assembly line that'll guarantee return of investment. Now, in a lot of cases, there's typically a significant amount of people in a fan base that raise a stink when rappers take a commercial endorsement. You know, like, oh, I thought it was supposed to be about the music, man. But in the case of Travis Scott, I don't think there's much cause to bemoan the loss of artistic credibility here. Like, what's there to artistically compromise in the first place? Uh-oh, his generic trap songs might become even more generic, oh no. But if I could be frank here, you know, in the grand scheme of things, that whole 90s mentality of never do commercial stuff ever, or that means your music is automatically bad now, you know, that was always a little short-sighted. I mean, sure, it can be a sign that an artist doesn't care about their art and only wants to make money, but honestly, there are plenty of artists who make commercial stuff but bring their personality to it in a way that makes for an enjoyable experience. I mean, Method Man did a silly but pretty fun Sour Patch Kids rap once, and uh, there was even that McDonald's ad Kyle did a couple years back, uh, where the song had a fun melody and was about pulling up to the drive-thru with your friends and ordering a meal. Now, from a marketing standpoint, sure, it's all just about selling you shit, but if you listen to it, you can still get some enjoyment out of the songs in and of themselves that makes it ultimately kind of tolerable that it's an ad. So in my opinion, th there's nothing inherently wrong with taking some commercial money, it's about what we the people are getting in return. So what are we supposed to get out of this? Call the pipe Williams for the hype, please. Yeah, call the Sprite people. Call them, hold on. Private flight franchise sites. Um. Like, what I should be getting out of this song is that you actually give a shit about the product you're trying to sell, but the illusion's completely shattered if you're just straight up talking about marketing meetings and how you're gonna spend the money they gave you. And besides, with those other songs I mentioned, you know, they're selling you on a good time. You at least get the feeling they somewhat enjoy the product they're rapping about. With this, the only feeling I'm picking up is I was paid to write this song. And all of this wouldn't even be things I'd care about if the song was banging, but these are the lyrics we're given. Yep, in my white tee. Yeah, call the pipe Williams for the hype, please. Like, seriously, you started off your rap song by ripping off another rap song? Yep, in my white tee. Yep, in my white tee. I mean, I guess in that way you can see the song title as a semi-homage to them franchise boys, but when you find out the original title of the Travis Scott demo for the song was just called White Tea, it feels less like an homage and more just kind of lazy. And what's even the point of him doing this? W what, just for the reference? Because the original song was written by a bunch of broke dudes who used the song to make a trend out of the fact that those were the only clothes that they could afford. It's one of those owning your poverty moments where it's like, yeah, this may be all we got, but we're such badasses we made it look cool regardless. But Travis Scott is obviously rich, so what's functionally the point of him mentioning it here? Aren't you supposed to be bragging about stuff that, like, actually costs money? Oh, what, is this him signifying he's still down with street culture? Man, that's gotta be the most low-effort signifier ever. Hey, I may be kicking it Olympic poolside in the backyard of my three-story mansion while waiting for Julio to bring the lobster scampi, but I do it while wearing a plain white t-shirt because I'm just in touch with the roots like that. And even as a sentiment we're supposed to sing along to, like, what's the appeal? I'm a millionaire who dresses unremarkably? It's just not that strong of a sentiment. They gon' wipe you before you wipe me. Boxes of checks, not my Nikes. And hey, wasn't this supposed to be a McDonald's commercial? Shit, you could have fooled me with all the other brands they keep bringing up. It's not my Nikes. Cactus, not no ice tea. Call the Sprite people. Call me go buggy. Call us like it's like Zootopia. A Kodak. There's more as in the songs than the jumpsuit of a goddamn race car driver. And yet, and still, I don't remember them saying the word McDonald's even once. Shit, if I was the CEO of Mickey D's, I don't want my goddamn money back. You're just gonna advertise for six other companies for free? What part of the game is that? Well, at least he got to put in a slick little promo for his cacti company. So it's like, yeah, he got to one up on the corporations by getting some FaceTime for his own brand. That, as of the release of this music video, still isn't out yet. And even his closest fans don't 100% even know what it is. I mean, I, the shit could drop as soon as I put this review out, but it seems like bad optics for you to have the only brand in this video whose actual product isn't on the market yet. Like, if it's all cross promotion anyways, wouldn't you want to make sure that the brand you own would be on the market, like, before the big promotional music video comes out. Fuck, man, if you're gonna sell out, at least do this shit right. What, did you learn your marketing skills from Grandad on the Boondocks? I, uh, also have a book. It's not out yet. I actually just started writing it, but I do have a cover. So I put it on another book, so here's what it's gonna look like. Anyway, Tebow this if you have the Tebow, and play it back when the book come out to remind yourself to go buy it. Uh, thank you. But okay, we all know how this type of review goes. I talk shit about the verses of the song, but then they come in with a killer hook that's so earwormy and enjoyable, I'm gonna have no choice but to like it, like, just a little bit, right? They gon' wipe you before you wipe me. Unboxes 
the checks, not my Nikes. Wait, wait, that was the hook? Are you fucking joking? Yup, in my white tee. Yup, call a pipe, Williams for the hype, please. Yeah, it, it repeats a lot, so I, I guess this is supposed to be it, but it's just such a nothing of a chorus. Usually, I can't get the hooks of these mainstream songs out of my head when I have to talk about them, but with this, I. I honestly keep confusing this song with his interchangeably bland but somehow still number one charting song from last year. Hell, the most memorable part of it is a lyric from another song. Yep, in my white tee. Oh, and then there's the guest appearances, which honestly feels like a waste of paychecks on McDonald's part, because Young Thug's verse whizzes by without really leaving a lasting impact, and M.I.A. barely exists on this damn song. Incredible. <laughs> General. I just thought the label just assigned me. What happened? Did someone just switched the radio between two stations real quick? Well, what was that? Yeah, what? I, who are you shooting at all of a sudden? And you only mentioned that he was typing before you shot him. Did, did you shoot him just for writing something? Doesn't really feel like the crowd fits the punishment here. Oh, uh, okay. Well, I'll take care not to go missing in Mississippi. I, is this related to what the song's about? What the fuck was all that supposed to mean? The term was made popular by Sheck on his 2018 track Chippy Chippy, and following this line, Sheck has an ad lib. Wait, there's another person on this song? Oh, we're golfing or fishing or what, what? What the fuck is happening right now? London City left the town. Yeah. Oh, be they the fam, MIA. Were you and Young Thug and Sheck West and Travis Scott just palling around in the studio when you made this? Because with the way she's just randomly chopped in here, MIA doesn't sound like she was on the same continent, let alone the same studio. And then the way it ends is so freaking awkward. The vocal clip is just strangely offbeat. Like, that couldn't have been anything but a mistake. What the hell was she even wearing, anyways? Looks like they were almost gonna do some cool Poison Ivy type flower costume, but didn't have enough time to really work on it, so, so they just went, fuck it, it tie some flowers to a metal gate and strap it around her body, it was good enough. This shit is just bad all around, I'd give it a 1 out of 5 at best. How in the hell did this top the charts? Well, for like a week, before it slipped down over 20 spots in the time it took to write this review. And just as well, it's so boring and meandering, I'm barely able to retain anything they say whenever I hear it. Feels like every time it comes on, time jumps forward 4 minutes and I can't remember anything that just happened. Like, how is this review even this long? What the hell was I even talking about? Why are you even watching this video? I've the song stick in your brain long enough for you to even remember to look for it. But anyway, that's the episode. Leave a like if you like because it helps, comment if you have something to say because it helps even more, and hit the subscribe button and the bell because it helps the most. And if you want to get my merch, follow me on social media, listen to my podcast, or financially support the show, all those links are in the link tree below. So check all that fun stuff out, and I'll catch you next time. Peace.